Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, Learn Smarter, Work Smarter with uh, Journal Alerts with EBSCOhost. Um, I'm Lisa Nash from Learning Exchange and we're very fortunate today we have Kylie Peckham from EBSCOhost um, who's going to give her um, give us her expertise on how we can use journal alerts to learn and work smarter. So what you can see in that, that what I'm sharing on the screen at the moment is uh, our uh, suite of databases, um, as well as some other things that we have access to like eBooks ourselves, but most of these are our EBSCO databases. And I'll just do a quick reminder that um, to get to these, uh, I'll just move this a little, is if you don't already know it, um, how to get to your e-library to get to these databases, you go to Classmate, which is classmate.para.catholic.edu.au. You click into eLibrary. That would then take you to a login page. Uh, at the moment, it's just refreshing. Once you've logged in, you go to here and you can go direct to e-resources or you could go to library. So click on library is probably the best. And then you click into e-resources. And you will end up at this page. I will now hand over to Kylie so that she can, yes. Thanks Lisa. So perhaps if you just keep control just for a minute yep. and if you bring me down to the EBSCO host uh, access point, mm -hmm. I'll just get you to jump me into EBSCO host and then I'll talk about what general alerts are and we'll have a look at how we can set them up. Okay. So All right. So click on, click on right. the EBSCO host. Yep. Mm -hmm. And let's start in the professional development collection. So while Lisa's doing this for me, I'll just talk about journal alerts. Now journal alerts are a fabulous tool that you do have access to within a number of your EBSCO resources. Now today, for my first example, I have asked Lisa to jump into the EBSCO host interface and we're going to set up a journal alert for a professional development journal that is probably of interest to any teacher in any of your schools. Um, so at this point, Lisa's really just uh, selecting a database for me. So we'll go down and we'll select the professional development collection. And once that database is up on your screen, Lisa, you can hand over uh, control of the web browser to yep. me. Okay. There and, it is. So, and if you were at the, if you weren't at the session last week, we went into how this is a power searching tool, this particular um, link that we've gone into. You can go into each of these collections separately on the page that we were on before. That's right. And just one thing to note, when you are setting up journal alerts, you really do need to choose a database to work in to find the journal that is of interest to you. So we're going into the professional development collection. First of all, the first journal alert that we're going to set up is a professional development journal. So let's select that database. Select and it, it and then continue. That's right. Yep. Okay. So Lisa, you can hand over, there's mm -hmm. two things, control, First of all, if you can take me to my desktop at this point, if I can have control to show the journal yep, alert control. slide. Yep. yep. Okay. I've got control of your screen. Can you give me control to show my screen? Uh, okay. Yep. I'll stop sharing. Yep. Now you should be able to go and share from the bottom, Kylie. Okay, sure, thank you. Sorry. Yep, perfect. Okay, thanks for bearing with us. It's uh, just a bit of jumping backwards and forwards today, just while we get up and running. So what I really want to show you, first of all, is an example of what a journal alert email looks like. And we'll talk about what journal alerts are. They're a wonderful tool that you have access to in any of your EBSCO resources. What you can do in your databases, you can set up what we call a journal alert. It's an email notification that you can set up for yourself or you can set up for other colleagues or even students. And it's an email notification to let people know when the next issue of a journal that they are interested in is available 
in one of the EBSCO databases. And what they'll also get is basically a contents page emailed through. So this example here, this is actually an example of a journal alert that's set up in a database called the Australian New Zealand Reference Centre. The journal that I set this up for was actually the Australian Gourmet Traveller. So you can set up journal alerts for any journal or magazine publications in your EBSCO resources. And when the next issue of that journal of interest is available, an email will be generated and sent to the person to who the journal alert has been set up for. So you can set up journal alerts for yourself, but you can also manage journal alerts for other colleagues. If you work in your school library and you think that uh, a journal alert for perhaps new scientists would be extremely useful for your science teachers, your science department, you can set that up on their behalf or you can show them how to do this themselves. So it's quite flexible in the management of the journal alerts. Uh, so this tool is great to notify of recent content that has been added to your EBSCO databases for a particular publication that people are interested in. I think of the EBSCO journal alerts as a brilliant promotional tool. So think about if you do set up journal alerts for a number of your teaching staff, it's an automatic reminder popping into their inbox on a regular basis of all the wonderful content that you do have access access to in the EBSCO resources that your school network is sub subscribing to. So at a glance, they can see that the next issue of a journal is available. They can also take a look pretty much at the contents page and they can even read an abstract. So see what the article is about. If there is an article of interest, if I was to click on the uh, URL appearing in item number two, um, soup recipes in this case, you can see that the URL will take me straight to that article in the database. If I'm on the school network, I'm automatically authenticated. If I'm accessing this link from home, I would need to authenticate here. So that gives you an idea as to what a journal alert is. And this is just one example of how the journal alert may look. When I set a journal alert up for you, you you'll see that you do have a few different parameters. You can set up journal alerts in HTML format, such as this example here, but you can also set them up in plain text. So you can play around with journal alerts. There's a few different parameters. Uh, thanks, Lisa. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we should go back to you to you and mm -hmm. then I'll take control of your screen once again okay okay so jumping back to Lisa's screen and keep in mind we did go into the EBSCO host access point and Lisa did select for me the professional development collection uh, database and this is where I'm going to find some really great uh, journal content on um, perhaps some teaching journals, education um, material that is probably of interest to anyone teaching in any of your school environments. So once you have selected your database, you go into your publication option in your top blue toolbar. Now keep in mind, we do have a fact sheet on how to set up journal alerts, and I'll direct you to that fact sheet at the end of the session so you can uh, print that out and run through step by step what I'm showing you today. So I'm just clicking on publications. Now, um, uh, we just had one person giving us a topic, which probably fits in well with one of the ones we we're talking about. So she's saying school leadership. Okay. So, um, so that might be a good one to try as well. We can do a few things in here. So once you've clicked on publications, your publication search field will appear here. I can search alphabetically if I know the name of the journal or magazine that I'm searching for that I want to set the journal alert up for. Um, I can browse by subject and description or I can match any words. So we could perhaps leadership and see what's coming up. Yep, so that's a few Educational there. leadership is a journal that might be of interest to you. If you are running a subject search, you will have to browse through. And keep in mind, I've really just typed in one keyword here. 
you're probably all much more familiar with the educational leadership journals than what I am. Um, Lisa, is there one that I can select that yeah. might be of interest? I think um, the educational leadership one is a, a really good one. Um, yeah. It's broad, gives leadership, but also gives um, curriculum-based material uh, right. across all topics as well. Okay, that looks good. So if you are doing a browse search, you can choose the journal that is of interest to you. So at this point, you are clicking on the title of the publication and it will then take you through to our publication page. Now, you've probably seen this page before if you have ever run a publication search. And on this page, there's basically three different things you can do. You can search within this publication on the left. You can browse through any previous issues on the right, but what we're going to do is we're going to click on the share option on the right hand side. And when you click on share, just see if that's going to come up for me. There we go. The option that I'm looking for is the email alert. This is where you set up your journal alert. So I'm clicking on email alert and it takes me to my create alert pop-up window. It's telling me that I'm setting up a journal alert for education leadership. And then there's a few things that I need to fill in in this window. I can change the subject line. So this is setting parameters as to how the journal alert will appear, what it will look like, how often it will um, come through and who it will be emailed to. So, so I so might... Kylie, can I ask a question? Um, sure. So if you were a, a library staff and you wanted to set this up to go to someone else, you could even say, you know, yeah, oh, you're writing that library journal alert on educational leadership. Yeah, you can change the subject heading. So our default is EBSCO alert. But if you're a library staff member setting this up for a, teach, a teacher, that may not mean a lot to them. It might come through, it might look like spam, for example. So you can change the heading uh, to make it a little bit more straightforward as to what the content is. The other thing you probably wanted to do is change the email from. So you might actually set this from your generic library email address if you have one or from your email address if you're a staff member. Yep, but and I noticed that... Um, just so it's not looking like spam Yes. when it comes through to their inbox. Yeah, and for the subject too, I know some schools have even, they're doing professional learning communities, so they've called the subject, you know, mathematics, um, PLC, um, teaching mathematics journal or something like that. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. You can change the subject line to anything uh, that you think will make sense to the person who is receiving this journal alert. Now, the email too, note that you can apply, you can insert more than one email address here. So just separate each email with a semicolon. And this is where I mentioned earlier, you could set up one uh, journal alert for the whole science department or your maths department, your history department, for example, here. And can, can I just check, is it semicolon and a space or is it just semicolon? semicolon then a space. Yep. So space, semicolon, space. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your email format, plain text or HTML, this is really just personal preference. So if journal alerts are of interest to you, perhaps set up a couple for yourself, first of all, and play around with these types of parameters. I personally prefer the HTML. Uh, you might like the plain text here. Link to the table of contents or link to the individual articles here. This link to the individual articles will display the way that I uh, had my Australian Gourmet Traveller. It, it looks like a contents page, but it actually gives you more information. It will include that abstract information. So I do prefer this link to individual articles and they will display in a list with that abstract information. Now, talking about the abstract information, brief, detailed, I always change this to detailed so that, that the abstract information will appear. So this is my preferred setting, detailed uh, results format. And this parameter on the right, alert on full text only, is really important. So New Scientist is, is a good example. New Scientist in our databases, there is a publication embargo, a publisher embargo, and that means that the full text appears in the database 30 days after the brief records or the abstract records. So if you are setting up a journal alert 
and the there is a publisher embargo in place, always select this alert on full text only. If you're not sure if there is a publisher embargo, just tick this box in any case here. I'll point out to you where you can find out that publisher embargo information. Uh, there's not one in place for this particular journal, but I can select this tick box anyway. So I'm really just using my plain text HTML, linking to the articles and detailed and alert on full text only. And, and can I say, Kylie, sometimes I use detailed and sometimes I use the brief. It yeah. just depends on who I'm sending it to. Um, sometimes right. I feel that the detailed is too long. Yes. So, um, yeah, so it depends on who I'm sending it to. That's right. And you can, you can determine these parameters in every journal alert that you're setting up. Now, at this point, I can save the alert. You do have advanced settings, but I'll show you those. I'll show you how you can access those after the fact if we do save this alert. And note in your school network, you have what we call single sign-in. You're automatically signed into your EBSCO folder when you come into any of the EBSCO interfaces. So what you really need to be aware is that when you save a journal alert, you will find details of that journal alert in your folder. So I've logged in. I'm logged in as Lisa at the moment. Lisa, I hope you don't mind if I jump into your folder. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, just clicking on the folder. It will open up the EBSCO host folder view and it's taking me straight to this journal alert. If I had a number of journal alerts set up, have a look just down here on the left uh, where my mouse is, journal alerts, and have a look. I can edit this alert at any stage. I can also select and delete this alert if I've set this up for another teacher and they've told me they're no longer interested in this journal. I can manage the alert from my folder here. Let's go into edit alert. There's a couple of things here you might like to be aware of. The alerts are set up as a default to run for six months. Now, if you come into your advanced settings when you're creating the alert or edit your alert from your folder, you can jump that up to one year if you wish to. You can also change your parameters and you can edit your email addresses. You can add an email address at this point. You can change your subject heading, for example, here. I won't make any more changes. I will just save. So you can always edit an alert after you have created it. Just jump into your folder using your folder option, top blue toolbar on the right hand side. So let's continue here. So that's really setting up an alert for a journal called Educational Leadership. And keep in mind, from our publication search, we browsed. Um, I'll just run another search. So another journal that Lisa brought to my attention is the Fee Delta Capen. And I'm running an alphabetical search. I know the exact title. Oh, have I spelt that wrong? Uh, yeah, I think Kappen's with an E. E. E N. Yeah. By, by Delta Kappen. A, A N. Sorry, it's coming up actually. A N. Thank A -N. you. A N. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Even, yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Run that search and it will find this uh, journal here. So whether you're searching alphabetically or if you're browsing by subject and description, or if you're matching any words, if you're not entirely sure of the spelling, if I didn't know the spelling, I could have taken that cap and out and just searched for uh, these two terms here on match any words. And I did mention the publisher embargo. If there is a publisher embargo in place, it will always tell you at this point here. So once again, for this particular journal, there is no publisher embargo click on the title and go straight over to share and email alert will bring up your journal alert window here. So that's uh, setting up a professional development journal. What I might do is just change our database. So I'm jumping out of the professional development collection. I'm going back to my homepage for EBSCOhost, choose databases and I want to set up a journal alert for a more subject-based uh, publication. So maybe a science journal or 
a maths journal, history journal, for example. But the process is the same. So once you're in your database, you can run your publication search. Uh, let's look for Australian primary mathematics. On that search, uh, is it this one here, Lisa? Yeah, that, that's yeah. correct, yeah. Select the journal and once again, straight over to share, email alert. So the process is exactly the same, regardless of which database you're in. If I go back to my publication search, I will search for new scientists to show you where you'll find details of a publisher embargo. Yeah, so often there's um, any of our Australian um, journals that they are in professional development database um, and there's a crossover. Sometimes they're in ANZ, but sometimes there's some other ones. So it's always worth checking the different databases to have a look at what journals might be available. And as Kylie said, alphabetical or even try by subject um, or topic, uh, you know, keywords to find different journals that you're interested in. Um, That's right. Yeah. So new scientists, you can see that there is a publisher embargo. It's uh, alerting me at this point that there is a 30 day delay uh, for the full text to appear in the database. So if I wanted to set up a journal alert for new scientists, for my science teachers, I don't think my teachers would be too impressed if I did set them up an alert when the abstract only or the summary only appears in the database. I do need to ensure for this particular publication that I am alerting on full text only. So that the alert is emailed to the teachers when the full text is in the database of that latest edition of New Scientist. Um, if we just come back, I'll just run perhaps a generic search, Lisa, in this database, so subject history, and let's see what comes up here. So it's really interesting to see. Uh, this is how you can search these databases to see what the actual mm -hmm. content is in a subject that is of interest to you mm -hmm. here. Uh, politics and history. Uh, history Today is coming up. History Australia. Keep in mind this is bibliographic records only. So it will alert you if the full text. So we're looking for the full text options here. So history today would be a good example where we could set up a journal alert. So that's really the process. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, when you come into your databases, you will be already signed into your EBSCOhost folder. I can see that by this little My EBSCOhost icon here in yellow, and you're going straight to your publication search to search for that publication to set the journal alert up for. And if I remember correctly, Kylie, when you set up that first alert, if you were setting that up to send to me, I would get an email straight away to say that I have an alert set up. That's right. It will send a confirmation email to the person who you've put uh, in the parameters to receive that alert. So they do get an indicator immediately that you have set up something for them. That's right. Mm. Okay. That's great. Now, I did mention that there are step-by-step -step instructions. So... The instructions, you'll find them in our EBSCO support site, which is called EBSCO Connect. And the easiest way to find the support site, regardless of which database you're in, if it's an EBSCO resource, you can scroll down to the bottom of any page, whether it's a homepage or a results list, and you'll see this EBSCO support site link. When you click on that link, it will open up EBSCO Connect which is our support site, in an additional tab. And I can just search for journal alerts. And a fact sheet will appear with step-by-step -step instructions. How to use journal alerts at the very top. There's also a tutorial, a two minute tutorial that you can watch. But if I click on the fact sheet, step-by-step -step instructions with some screenshots, here, how to use journal alerts. It's taking me straight to that publication search. It will also tell you how to edit an alert and also how to delete 
and alert. So everything you need to know is in here. Excellent. Um, now, Kylie, I noticed that, um, which probably answered another question, if you go back to that page that you just had, um, it had the journal alerts, then it had, um, on EBSCO uh, Connect, yes. it had um, search alerts. So Kira's just asked, can you set up an alert for a topic? So Absolutely. that would be the search alert. That's right. So we do have search alert functionality. So that could be the topic for our next webinar, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, definitely. So if you have students who are researching a particular topic, perhaps for a term, uh, half a year, they can set up a search alert so that any new content coming into their database of choice is emailed to them. And they also set up the parameters for that search alert as to whether they're emailed weekly, daily, monthly, bi-monthly, for example. So it's a wonderful tool for anyone in a school library. And that's what we call our EBSCO search alerts. But of course you can, someone's found the details in here. Um, I can just run a search on search alerts and it will take me straight to the fact sheet. And a tutorial. Okay, that's good. Let's bring right. that up for Kira. How to use search alerts. Oh. So once again, a fact sheet and there's that two or three minute tutorial just below. EBSCO Connect is a really wonderful tool. If people are not familiar with EBSCO Connect, uh, just have a bit of a look in here. There's lots of useful information. Uh, you'll find fact sheets, tutorials, trainer guides, user guides, all sorts of material that is very, very useful for your teachers and your students. Well, thanks, Kylie. Do you mind, because you've got control, I believe there's a question in the Q&A. Are you able to select that? Yeah. Time? Uh, let's have a look. So the question from Kira, is it only possible to set up an alert for a publication oh. or you can you do it with a topic? Yep. So, so the, the topic same. is the search alerts. So it's the same in the Q&A, is it, as the chat? Yep. Uh, this is the Q&A that I've opened. Yep. Oh, how Excellent. about it if I give you control? Yep. Back. Let's have a look. Um, give up remote control? Yep. Okay. Are there any other questions? No. Okay. Is this a tool that people find useful? Great. So, okay. So Kira said, are the search alerts in the single publication or across publications? So a single publication, just searching for a single pub publication, but you can set up a number of uh, alerts. Oh, sorry. Was that the search or the journal search, alerts? The search alerts, search alerts. Search alerts are across the entire database, so thousands of publications. Yeah. Journal so alerts are just one, one publication. That's right. right. So search alerts are a really powerful tool. Okay. And I okay. think we should plan a webinar uh, on search, search alerts, alerts in the next week, week or so. Yeah. First I've heard of them, Kira is telling me. Yeah, they're a wonderful tool. Let's get the word out about them. Yeah, yeah, they're excellent, especially I know when I've got specific um, sort of technology or research areas, um, like years ago, we were, you know, looking at what the latest was coming out on iPads. That's so right. So I was searching across or even behavioural issues with students. I would yeah. put in a number of keywords I had um, and I still have one called digital technology um, mm -hmm. alert that looks across a range of digital technologies that it comes yeah. in and Fantastic. I send that out to people. So, yes. Yep, um, perfect. Yeah, so it, it's, it's a very journal alerts and search alerts. So it is a very powerful tool. Absolutely. So it doesn't look like there's any other questions, but you know that you can always email me and we can um, ask Kylie if I can't answer that question. Um, I hope that you found this uh, really useful. Really, you know, why go and search for things all the time if you can, you know, have a journal alert sent to you by email, you know, we all have, we are all time poor and it's great to have little systems like this that just make our processes more efficient. And the fact that then you can then forward that or set it up to go straight to someone else. So yeah. you can send that out to um, people in your school, um, you know, as a leader in a school, you can actually just make sure that people are reading the sorts of journals 
articles that you want them to read. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. So um, Absolutely. And don't forget, think about it as a promotional tool. It gets your users, your teachers, your students right back into your databases without even trying. They'll receive an email, they'll have a look through that contents page, find an article of interest, and they're in your resources. And once they're in there, they'll probably start searching on something else. So it's That's a really right. good, really great promotional tool. That's right. Now, I'll send the recording through um, when I get that, that ready, because usually I just have a look at it, and if it needs um, some sort of editing and added to it, I'll do that. So I'll send that through to all of you, and you can um, have a look at this again. Thank you, everyone, and thanks very much, Kylie. Thanks, everyone.